What is your nightmare co-worker story? The day she got fired, she texted the manager that she needed to come in late and leave early, and she wanted her old shift back. She'd been switched to a later time because she was constantly calling off or coming in late. Also, she needed a raise. We found out that she had been posting crap about employees in the business on Facebook, where she was friends with half of the staff at aforementioned business. Pretty sure she was stealing too. This is a new level of stupid. I have a co-worker who insists on talking to me like I have zero knowledge in my field despite me actually having more experience and a higher job title than him. He also lectures people like he is their manager even if they have been there longer than him. I even listened to him reprimand his own supervisor. He just gave me a lecture the other day on how to install a network printer. I've been in IT for 8 years now and in a heck of a lot more industries than he has. You just got to wait till he gets something wrong then rip H a new one. Currently working with a person who has had a sinus infection since November 2016. That's right, wet, chunky coughs, 9 hours a day, 5 days a week, for going on 10 months. No she does not leave the team area for coughing attacks, she just retches up whatever it is and gulps it back down. 10 months of that in a quiet office. Sounds like she should see a doctor, or is just a very heavy smoker. I work in a dog grooming salon. My co-worker A is a self-professed cat person. She doesn't like our customers. She doesn't like most dogs. She complains if she's booked dogs. She complains if she isn't booked dogs. She somehow never managed to commission, and complains about that too. She never helps clean. And when I close with her she will disappear because at 8.30pm apparently she has to take a 20 minute poop in the bathroom. She claims to be allergic to most foods but still eats McDonald's and Burger King. She allegedly has celiac disease but has never been tested. She also is allergic to cats, flowers, latex, almost anything. Despite claiming to be an avid gardener the one time a co-worker got flowers she insisted they be removed from our work area because she was allergic. Same when another co-worker received balloons. She has said on more than one occasion she likes to find out people's weaknesses and pick at them. One of my co-workers lives with her in-laws as both of them have student debt they are very close to paying off. I will constantly add small digs that are like not that you would know. It's not like you have to pay rent or a mortgage like real adults. Everyone complains about her but our one manager has worked with her since the beginning and clearly doesn't feel comfortable talking to her. And our other manager is BFFS with her husband. She is good at her job, and even deals with difficult dogs well. She just has such a crap personality and is so negative about everything. His name is Tyler. I used to work at a convenience store that used to solely be open between the hours 7am and 11pm. At this point in my life I had been there for about 6 years. Well they hired Tyler because he is the son of one of the regular customers. They place him on my shift and it was easily the worst shift I ever had. Normally I work 7am to 3pm. But that day I had to stay till 5pm because I was so behind on the things I needed to do. On this day our order was larger than normal because our two ordering bosses were away on vacation the past week so it was 2 weeks worth of items being delivered. He had been there for about 3 weeks at this point. Most training is about a week long before you are being placed on regular shifts. But not for Tyler. Here is a list of the reasons I was behind on my work. Every other customer I had to stop the transaction and fix the mistakes he was making. Scanning items 3-4 times without noticing. Each time I walked him through how to delete an item off the list so he could do it himself if he missed up. I would walk away to start putting order items on the shelves and look up 2 minutes later to see a line of 6 people at the register. It took 45 minutes to change 6 trash cans, all of which were in a 10 foot by 4 featuring square of each other. I sat there at the register watching him watch the same 6 commercials that were on the TV. Constantly had to cancel orders because he forgot to place the total they paid him and didn't understand how to give people change without seeing the change total on the screen. His way to fix this was ring all the items again and put the change in the second time. I explained each time how to count change without it and explained that you can't just ray ring items because it throws off totals in the system. Had to talk to several of those customers because Tyler ended up cursing in front of them. Had to talk to several customers because Tyler had given them raw food instead of the cooked food. We had a system. 
cooked food is in front of the sign, raw behind it. He constantly grabbed the food behind the sign. All of which put me 2 hours behind on my work. My boss ended up having to drop what he was doing and help me when Tyler left at 3 and our 2 replacements came in. Currently still a nightmare. C sees the entire office including multiple owners of the company when she corrects something I've done. My office is about 10 feet from hers. Every time she does it I just think why can't you walk 10 feet and come tell me or address the issue with me. Usually it's something small or extremely irrelevant. But now I just correct her or show her that it's not wrong at all and press reply all so they can see it. Sounds like one of those people who masks their lack of actual work done by making sure everyone regularly sees that she's doing something, even if she's not. A little off topic but I noticed with these threads it is always office workers that write in them. I have worked mostly in the mining and the oil industry my whole life so I am not familiar with office work. Is it just easier to tell people off and speak your mind in industry work? Oh yeah, in the office if you tell someone off you end up in a meeting with managers and HR about teamwork. Here's a story of 4 people being fired in one day for different reasons. A fifth unknown stealing money, and my 17 year old self wondering how did I get myself here? Worked at a family owned fast food Italian place. Nice job, easy work, free food, decent hours. Not bad for 17 year old high schooler. I check the schedule for how I'm working with tomorrow and it's manager A and co-worker A that then switch shifts. I was across two shifts, after lunch and closing, with manager B and co-worker B. They're all decent I suppose, though one blatantly did our fraud, came in at 830, entered time as 8, shift goes to switch so and the B's and as brief each other on what's happening. Owner and manager C, who's the best one, no illegal stuff, come in and tell them all to pack up and leave. Turns the as were in a relationship and were stealing money to fuel her pill addiction. The bees were caught freaking in the office. Manager was married, plus bees are fraud and were also fired. This all happens as I'm cleaning a table bewildered. Thinking his stealing issues were over. Owner leaves and manager C calls employees to fill in for tomorrow's vacancies. Turns out, someone else steals from the register the next day and we're all told to submit to a lie detector test. Manager C comes up to me and says real funny talk, we're closing so you don't have to come in anymore. But what about the lie detector test? Even if you told me you did it, I wouldn't believe you. You're fine. That last part was nice, I didn't steal it by the way. TL. DR. Second job ever and I see 4 people get fired at once for different stuff, a fifth also stealing. Only employee in the building not to be getting some. Story of every 17 year old's life. Work in an office. Have a colleague who is literally the world's worst diabetic. I'm fairly certain she has munch orzons. Her eyes are going and she has problems with her feet. She makes a huge deal about making sure everyone sees her take her insulin and then eats a whole giant bag of Haribo. 5 bags of crisps and half a cake. I really wish I was exaggerating. It's ridiculous. We keep having to ring ambulances for her because she's eating too much sugar. She's nearly killed herself at least twice as a result. Oh and she's recently decided she's a super right wing Christian. That our gay colleague is going to heck and shouldn't be living with his boyfriend and that she is saving herself until her current partner and her get married. Which they plan to do next year. Even though they met in March. Worth noting. She has banged her way around one of the other departments and is divorced. She's a total freaking nut bar. One of the shittier parts of being a graphic designer is that everybody thinks they're a graphic designer. People think the job is just making things look good. And everybody thinks they know what looks good. To that end they assume that the job is entirely technical, and that my only skill is knowing how to use photoshop really well. You'd think people who actually work at design firms would know better, but holy crap. No, not even a little bit. Once I worked at a design agency that used account managers as go-betweens for the clients and the designers. I landed a freaking dunderhead of an account manager. This freaking butthole wasted days of my time. An account manager's job is to be a liaison. They pass information between two parties to help streamline and clarify what both parties want need. I can't tell if he was legitimately an idiot or if he was just a grasping shithead. But he seemed to think his job was to be my editor. Zero design experience. By the way, no technical skills, no theory, no knowledge of industry best practices. But still, 
He thought it was his purview to make sure what I did looked good and would request mountains of changes before submitting to the client, usually without telling me these were his requests. Surprisingly, a guy who had no idea how to do my job ended up complicating and freaking up my job, because inevitably the client would look at whatever monstrosity he'd dictated and say, this isn't what I asked for, please follow the brief. Even basic design practices were beyond this guy's grasp. I had to explain to him multiple times that you can't change your client's logo and branding colors unless that's their specific request. This idiot absolutely cratered my clearance rate. I have a lot of production experience. I'm very fast. I went from closing out projects in half the projected time to constantly going overtime, entirely because of him. Once I figured out his dumbass game and started bucking him he'd still refuse to actually do his job, and insist on dictating the designs to me. I actually had to call a meeting with our department head just to get him to back the frick off. This lady in a different department has been here for 30 years and thinks the department I work in shouldn't exist. Thus, she makes it her life's mission to freak up our work at every twist and turn. She has contact with many of our clients and will deliberately sabotage events we have planned for them. She refuses to do stuff that is part of her job description and forces us to do it. She gossips all the time and I've discovered on numerous occasions that I'm either gay, a fascist, a liar, a womanizer or just plain incompetent. For the record, I'm none of these things. The only reason she's still around is she's best friends with the boss. And so not only is her job protected but crossing her means a call into the boss's office. She's a nightmare and everyone but the boss wants her gone. Well, my logic is awful but, contact your boss's boss and tell them that a co-worker is hurting your department deliberately and is on good terms with your boss so if you report your co-worker to your boss it will get you fired. I had a co-worker lose his marbles. Started texting me all sorts of weird stuff and wanted to do some sort of murder-suicide pact after he walked out in the middle of the day without saying a word. I was the only person on my team he did this to. Cops and corporate security teams got involved. My team was told to leave the building and work from home for a while. I still work from home. I guess it worked out pretty well for me in the long run. Murder-suicide pact. Whoa. Working in fast food, training a new guy. He got caught stealing drinks from the fridge, decided to defend himself by saying he saw me stealing cola and thought it was a job perk. It was well known in the store I hate cola. Also he used to skip certain procedures which could result in food poisoning. When I confronted him about it, he shoved me into a wall and threatened to punch me. Nothing like a little assault on the job. My bosses, which are all related to one another, being a family owned business have no clue about technology. The VP is the worst. They are all decent people, but he gets angry when technology does not work for him. In this case, he got upset that his tiny netbook with 4 gigabytes of memory was slow. Upon inspection, he had 5 plus tabs open, along with various office apps and a music player. I found it very hard to explain that the little device just wasn't built for that kind of load. I had a co-worker who was employed in the role above me in the management chain. We both started the job on the same day and it was a short term contract, about 3 months. After a week, she realizes that she can't handle the job, keeps losing vital paperwork, telling clients wrong information, paying staff the wrong amounts. She's too proud to quit, but she has a trump card, her celiac disease, that is, a dangerous inability to digest gluten. Meaning that wheat products make her incredibly sick. She eats an entire loaf of bread on her lunch break and ends up in hospital. And quits the job because of her ill health. I have to take on her job as well as my own. Doing two jobs for three months. Because we can't find anyone to replace her. Worst of all, my other co-worker has her on Facebook. And we discover that she spent several weeks in Disneyland after she was released from hospital. I don't think she'll be getting much more work from that company. Not really a nightmare co-worker to me as much as a nightmare co-worker for my then boss. When I came into work in the mornings she would be sitting at my desk and would chat away for 15-20 minutes without moving from my seat. Even if I gave a hint that I had urgent deadlines. It was a lot my fault for not being more direct but to be honest I wasn't fond of the job myself so I didn't see the point in making the job I didn't really care about more awkward. If she wasn't didn't have anything to do, 
She would come and sit in my office and read Harry Potter with her legs up on the desk and as laid back as could be. She was obsessed with Harry Potter. Nothing wrong with that but when you bombard someone who has no interest in it with information about it, then it quickly becomes tedious. I still remember the conversations she would initiate with me, such as informing me she didn't like beans but she would eat beans with vinegar but not beans with cheese. Jesus Christ. That being said she wasn't a bad person, just maybe a little unaware of her behavior or how others interpreted that. Sounds like she was into you. New guy I was training to cook at KFC. Slower than a sloth and whenever I would show him the way we do things he would just do it his slow butt way and say it's easier. You haven't even tried the way we are supposed to do it. He put his jersey on top of the cardboard boxes which were on top of the lockers. I grabbed his jersey off to get a box down and his phone fell out of his pocket and hit the ground. I picked it up and checked if it smashed. It hadn't so I put it back in his pocket and went on with work. The next day he came up to me angry as heck saying I have to pay for a new phone because I smashed his. He showed me his phone and there was literally a 2mm crack in the bottom right hand corner. I just told him maybe he shouldn't put his stuff on top of things that we needed every day. This was within 3 days of him starting. He was a smart guy but an absolute zero in the social department in general tasks. He was a smart guy. No he wasn't. Worked at Best Buy for a couple of years in college. One guy was on a lot of drugs and was nuts. We had a theft problem with iPads. He was being watched. But they couldn't catch him. There were days where he would be yelling and shouting across the department. It was scary a few times since he would be yelling and cussing at me. I was put on final warning for the register being $100 off. My GM and managers knew it wasn't me, but they had to do it since I was logged into that register that day. He stopped showing up at some point fortunately. I was told that he and the Apple rep were the ones stealing the iPads to get money for their drug habits. Dennis. His name was freaking Dennis. Dennis is a biker. Dennis was a recovering addict. Dennis thought it would be a good idea to party with 16 year old girls and do ecstasy while on a work trip. Dennis is in his 40s and looks like he's been road hard and put up wet. Dennis decided to go out and spend all of his rent money on sea while on a work trip in Hollywood Florida and disappear all night and show up the next morning coked out of his mind demanding that I not rat him out. Dennis thought it would be a good idea to get crappy wasted drunk and drive back to the event we were working crap faced. Dennis got pulled over and got arrested for DUI. Dennis got the company work vehicle impounded. Dennis got left in Florida and had to take a Greyhound home. Dennis got drunk on stage and almost got our company kicked out of the event because he decided to dance around while the band was performing like he was in the band. Dennis still shows up to our family Thanksgiving and Christmas parties. Dennis has never been invited. This is only a couple of his finer moments. Frick Dennis. Dennis sounds like a real menace I'm sorry. I have posted stories of Karen before, like the time the meeting didn't go her way so she smashed a keyboard across her desk and went home, or how she would sit behind me disparaging me for being a pathetic male, or how she freaking stank off wet dog all the time, or how she derailed a safety critical update because nobody was allowed to criticize her code, or how she demanded that I should be fired when I called her out for falsifying reports. Had a co-worker who basically threatened to push my manager down the stairs to our basement. She replied with I won't fall down the stairs because I have God on my side to which he replied with God died in a fire 1000 years ago. What the frick sitcom is this from? I had a co-worker who started back in 2012. About the same time as me. I had been with the company for a while before. But this was a new role to both of us. We got off to a great start. She seemed to know her stuff, was funny, could joke around with the boys, etc. However, over time small things started to pop up. She didn't seem to get what she was supposed to be doing. Her work started to get dumped on the rest of the team, she was still dishing out the jokes, but couldn't really take them anymore. Started talking about her sex life in extreme detail, spreading false rumors about people at work, talking about them behind their backs. Just little things really, but they added up to where I couldn't stand her anymore. Finally, she reported me to HR for discrimination. I don't actually remember what she said about me, but it was something ridiculous. 
Thankfully, my manager had known me for a while, and this kind of behavior on my part seemed out of the ordinary. We talked about it, and she realized this lady was full of it. A short while later, she was let go as part of company restructuring. It was a bit of a nightmare to deal with her every day after she started getting on my nerves. The work canteen was far too small for everyone to use, besides it was kind of the territory of the shop floor workers anyway. This meant us office folk ate at our desks. Unfortunately for one horrible year I was sat next to this guy that clearly never been told to keep his mouth shut when chewing. It was like a pig at a trough. It turned my stomach so every time his lunchbox came out, I had to retreat down to the car park across the road and sit in my car. To make he matters worse when he wasn't eating, there was a constant waft of B.O. from his direction. Some days it was mingled with links as I actually think he believed in the shower in a con nonsense. To make he matters, for some reason this made me laugh, like you suddenly went all toddler on us. I have a co-worker who, while not a nightmare, seems to have based his personality largely on South Park. Everything he doesn't like is gay. It probably wouldn't bother me so much if he weren't almost 30. Reply back with for someone who apparently hates gay things. You sure talk about gay things a lot. I worked with a middle-aged woman who treated all her job duties as her personal fiefdom. Problem being, she sucked at her job and constantly needed help completing her assignments. Whenever I was assigned to her sister, she would get angry and possessive of her work, demanding that everything be done to her sub standards and refusing to relinquish tasks to the point that management was forced to intervene i mostly laughed off her behavior eventually i was promoted upsetting her to no end and she accused my male boss of misogyny ignoring the fact that this multi-million dollar firm was helmed by a woman and implied that i didn't deserve the position which pee me off somehow she kept her job at this point our relationship had devolved into a slow simmering feud interspersed with occasional arguments, me taking great pleasure in periodically finishing her work for her and her talking an insane amount of crap about me to my co-workers, which of course immediately got back to me. However, I eventually won the feud through the simple act of helping her carry a box of documents to her car. You see, she occasionally dropped the afternoon mailings off at the post office and for whatever reason that day there was a mountain of mail, her being a bit long in the tooth. She asked me if I would carry the box to her car, which I of course did. When she popped open her car door, a huge waft of skunky buttweed stank hit me. It smelled like she had at least an ounce of some dank crap in her glove box. I smoke a lot of weed but you couldn't really tell at the time because of my white collar facade. You can definitely tell these days because I'll look like the eponymous Florida man, which is okay because I live in Florida. So when I looked this woman in the face and said wow, don't get pulled over on the way home or I'll have to do all your work, her jaw literally dropped. Now, I would never have turned her in, but she didn't know that. So until I quit that job with malicious intent, another story for another thread, I didn't have any more problems with her, TL, DR, frick you, Joyce. I request part 2. I used to work in an office and we had this new guy start. On his first day on the job he came in really early for some reason, keen I guess, and I arrived some time after him. We were the only two in our company's section of the building besides the janitor who unlocks every morning. I went into the toilets to take my morning crap before too many of my colleagues arrived and I find this guy I've never met before standing with his back to the urinal with his pants around his ankles. Dong tucked between his legs peeing backwards into it. It looked like he was peeing out his butt. He looked up at me and I just sort of froze not really comprehending what I was seeing. Instead of reacting like any normal person would he just stared me down and continued peeing. He maintained eye contact the entire time. Unable to fathom the kind of balls this guy had I lost my nerve and just sort of backed out and shut the door. I saw him around a few times that morning and he would keep his eyes locked on mine no matter what way his body was facing. It would have been super uncomfortable even if I hadn't caught him doing that. What makes him a nightmare co-worker is that he told everyone in the office that he had caught me doing what I in fact had caught him doing. I never even heard him speak. The people in my office already thought I was a bit freaking strange so when I protested and told them which way around it happened no one believed me. He quit by lunchtime that same day. He needs some social skills now. 
My old boss was a nutcase. She removed her cubicle wall so she could watch us. No one was allowed to come talk to us about work or request anything from us without going through her first. If anyone came to our area to talk to us she would come stomping out of her cube and interrupt. She would follow us and eavesdrop on our conversations. But only hear parts of them and then get angry because she misunderstood what she heard. She required us to send our work to her. Which she would then send to whomever it was we were supposed to be working with. But take all the credit. Except she didn't know anything so she would have to come back with a million questions about it if they had any questions. She would yell at us on the floor. Once she made a girl on my team cry and then followed her to the bathroom to yell at us some more. Her manager had to be called in to separate them. She would wander around through other departments trying to enforce a dress code on them. And finally she told my co-worker she got low scores on her reviews because she was pregnant. Even after all that it took more than a year of huge turnover and everyone on our team, plus countless people in other departments, making formal complaints about her. For HR to finally pull the trigger because she was buddies with the head of the HR department. I had a co-worker fresh off the boat from Pakistan at a high-end one owner used car dealership. I was 22 at the time, he was in his 40s. We were both the lot guys and detailers. I had started 2 months prior to him being hired at the dealership and was basically running the lot and detailing department on my own for about a month after my previous co-worker quit to go somewhere else. The first day he came in I explained how everything works, usually like you do to new employees. This guy had too much of a sense of pride and didn't listen to me at all and just proceeded to do everything how he wanted. He also spoke very broken English, so communicating was a challenge most of the time. There were times he accused me of being racist towards him for doing things like moving my car to another location in the parking lot away from his, when I would move it away from the other parked cars once space cleared up. He would always pull the racist card whenever I did something he didn't like. He would always think I talked down to him whenever I asked him to do something. It was like walking on eggshells whenever you were around him. So finally, he told my manager that I would hide and nap in the cars on the lot when we weren't busy during downtime hours. I was really moving and organizing cars on the lot to look more presentable. This is what I did to kill time when no one came in to buy our crappy used cars. During downtime my co-worker would constantly be on his phone talking, watching videos, or playing his music of his homeland while I ran around the lot and worked. If I asked him to help, he would look at me and then go back to what he was doing. Finally I guess my manager got tired of my co-worker's stories, and I finally got let go on a Monday morning as my co-worker trained the new guy the week prior on Friday. I had Fridays off. It was a crappy job and I was glad to leave. Jokes on them. Because apparently the new guy they hired is even worse. TL. DR. Pakistani co-worker thinks I'm racist and got me fired. It's the last resort of a man with no skills. The race card. I had male co-worker who was openly gay and would call HR regarding every conversation he had with me that he didn't like. Our conversations would include why he didn't do his job, or clean a particular area like he should have. His HR complaints would be along the lines of Dan Halen 3 thinks that because I'm gay I should be the one cleaning like a woman. I was interviewed by HR every week for months and eventually had to contact management anytime I wanted to relay information to him. Instead of punishing him for making false accusations, they moved him to another department so that he didn't have to go through the mental stress of having real world conversations. Anytime I would apply for a promotion I would get a canned response of you've had too many investigations against you for us to consider you for this promotion. Worst experience with a co-worker ever. Investigations without penalties should not count. If you still work there leave. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.